Hello Internet, so nice to see you. I received a question about a piece I wrote and we're going to discover a great way to write chord progressions for your songs. Dear Tommaso, I love the orchestral piece you presented during the Augmented Madness video. Did you use chromatic medians apart from augmented chords? Could you spare a second to explain what you did there? I will be grateful forever. Well, first of all, let's go and listen to that orchestral piece. It's just a minute, but listen to it and pay particular attention to the chord progression and if it feels natural or not to you. Let's go. Okay, so what you've just seen is the piece I wrote, and every time there was a red bar on top of the musical bar, it was an augmented chord. And again, people ask me how did I write that chord progression, what it is, if it is chromatic, median, etc. I'm gonna give you the answer, I'm gonna show you exactly how I wrote that chord progression, and I'm gonna warn you immediately that when I'm, I'm gonna explain to you how I did, it's gonna look very unimpressive, okay? It's a very simple technique, and also, when I show it to you the first time, you are gonna think, this is never gonna work. So that's why I put the piece at the beginning, so you can go back and listen to it and see that it actually works, okay? I actually used to trick my students sometimes, giving this idea to, to write chord progressions, and then they tell me it doesn't work, and then I show them the piece, just because I'm a bastard, okay? <laughs> but let's see how I did it. The first thing I did, I was picking a scale. And I picked the scale of C major. Why? Because it's simple. Why complicate things, okay? This, the, the key of C major will contain the root of all the chords I'm going to use, but it will not contain the whole of the chord, meaning that the root will always be C, D, E, F, G, A, B. The root will always be only be those notes but the notes of the rest of the chord could be outside the key, okay? And then I'm giving myself two sequences to follow. The idea is this. The first sequence I follow is the quality of the chord. I'm always gonna play chord in this order. I'm gonna play first a major chord, okay? And by the way, this is only one possibility. You can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna start with a major chord, an augmented chord, a minor chord, and then another minor chord. So everything I'm playing there is major, augmented, minor, minor, major, augmented, minor, minor, and so on and so forth, okay? Why I decided on these? I just picked four chords, okay? Seriously, it's not harder than that. Second thing, I'm gonna start from C. And then, in any... For the next chord, I'm gonna move in a specific way. I'm always gonna move this way. I'm gonna move a third down, then I'm gonna move another third down. Then I'm gonna move a fifth down. Okay, notice that the first sequence has four elements, major, augmented, minor, minor. The second sequence has three elements, third, third, fifth. So they are gonna go in and out of sync all the time. Okay, so I'm gonna start from C. My first chord is going to be a major chord, so I'm going to write a C major chord. Then I'm going to go down a third in the key of C. Down a third in the key of C, I get the A node, and it has to be an augmented chord because it's the next one in my sequence. So I'm going to write A augmented. I'm going to go down another third, and I'm going to get an F. And the next chord in my sequence is a minor, so I'm going to play an F minor. So far so good. I'm going to go down a fifth. If from the note F I go down a fifth, I find a B. Of course, it's a diminished fifth, but I'm gonna stay in this case. So F, E, D, C, B. And so I'm gonna write B, 
and it's going to be a minor chord. You notice that those chords are not in the same key. C is in the key of C, but A, I went to this note, F minor is not, B minor is not. Not, not. not a problem as long as the root stay in the key of C. Then I'm going gonna, gonna to keep going. I'm going to go down a third from B, I'm going to get a G, and I'm also restarting this, so I'm going to get a G major. Down another third, I get an E, and it's an augmented, so augmented, down another a fifth, I'm going to get an A, and that's going to be an A minor. And down a third now, I'm going to get an F, and it's another minor, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, uh, and it was fifth, fourth, uh, so then the third round, now I'm going to go to the D, and that's a D major, because I'm here now, and so on and so forth. Okay, I can go on as much as I want. The next chord will be down a fifth from here, uh, which is a G, and it's going to be an augmented. I can stop whenever I want. Okay, I just keep going. Okay, if you, if these is the chord progression I use in that piece, no more, no less. Now, of course, I'm gonna play it in a moment on the guitar. I'm gonna see you, I show you how you make this sound. But the first objection people have when I show them this is that uh, these cannot possibly work because it's just a mathematical thing. And you guys are perfectly correct. It's just a mathematical thing. If, you, if the question is, how do I know how this sounds? The first time you do it, you don't know how it sounds. You do this thing a few times and you start realizing that how, how you choose those this order, these chords and this order and how you choose the interval influence the way the piece sounds. And you're going to find very soon what you like, what you don't like, and how to express different feeling by manipulating these and these. But once you establish these and these, you keep going. So again, I have four chord quality and three intervals. I could have had three chord qualities and four intervals, two of these, five of these. I could have put seven seconds, whatever I want. I could have put diminished, augmented, sevenths, major sevenths, whatever I want. In this case, it's just triads. So far, so good. Now comes the secret. If I just play these with the first shape that comes to my mind, it's going to sound horrible because those chords are going to be completely disconnected, okay? I mean, if I just play C major here and I'm going to search for an A uh, augmented probably here, that sounds pretty horrible. And then if I'm going to get an F minor here and then I'm going to get a B minor here and then I'm going to get a G major and could be, I don't know, here, it sounds pretty horrible as it is. So what you're going to do you're going to do a little bit of voice leading. So you are trying to play those chords so that the notes are as close as possible. If I'm playing C, I can play it here. Okay, now let me lower the volume a bit and get a more cleaner sound here. Yeah. There we are. Okay, I'm going to play my C here um, on a string 5, fret number 3, on string 4, 2, and 2, fret number 5. When I play the A augmented, I'm going to try to stay as close as possible with the notes, especially on the top three notes. So those chords now feel a little bit more connected because the notes are all close by, no? And then when I get to the next chord F minor, I try to stay close by. I'm going to get in this strange shape here. Oops, sorry. There we go. So I'm going to have F, A augmented, then F minor, then B minor, and I'm going to try to find the closest possible one, which is this. Then G major, the closest possible one. Then E augmented, the closest possible one. And A minor, the closest possible one that is playable. Then F minor, the closest possible one. It's next. D major, closest possible one. And G augmented, the closest possible one. That will be something like um, this and so on and so forth. So I always try to keep the notes closed, okay? The, the, to minimize the movement between the different notes of the chord. To give you an example, to give you an example more clear, the first chord is C, C, and, and I'm playing a C, a G, a C, and an E. And when I play the A augmented, the bass can move however I need it to move, but the other note try to move little, the little possible amount, so I have an A, a C sharp and an E sharp, which is like an F. So the E of the C major chord goes to the E sharp or F of the 
A augmented, the C of the C chord goes to uh, the C sharp of the augmented, and the G of the C chord goes to the A of the A augmented. So a very close, a very close movement, eh? as opposed to something like this, for instance, uh, say, which is very far away and so less connected, less fluid, less harmonic, if you want. <laughs> okay, so here's how I wrote that chord progression. And again, if it looks like a mathematical trick, it's because you see only one. I did this several times until I found a chord progression I liked. Simple as that. And then after a little bit of experience, you know how to choose the right qualities and numbers to make the chord progression sound the way you want. You can use this on your guitar. Now, if you don't like the augmented chords, if every time I play an augmented chord here, you cringe and the, <laughs> your bowels go up in your throat because it's like it sounds horrible, well, I cannot fault you. Don't choose the augmented chord in here. Put only major and minor, okay? Naturally, you are gonna hit some interesting chord progression, okay? The person who asked this question asked me if I use chromatic median. Occasionally it happens. What's a chromatic median? Two chords that are a third apart and not in the same key. It happens. Every time I have this interval of a third, pretty much I get a chromatic median because C to A, it's, it's, it's a third. C, to C, C major to A minor is a third and they're not in the same key. Okay, um, here A minor to F minor, that's a chromatic median, for instance, okay? Uh, B minor and G are actually in the same key, so... No, I mean, some of them are chromatic median, some of them are not. It's not even important. As long as you get this and that, and you play it, and you try to keep those notes close by, so, so you voice lead the chord progression, and you don't stop, <laughs> okay, and you, you keep going, the chord progression will make sense. You may like it or not, but it will make sense. This is a hyper-modern way of writing chord progression, okay? It's something that has not been done enough yet, it's completely new, and you can create new things using this. So that's a trick I'm giving to you guys, okay? Take it and write your own music. Now, if you want to know how to connect all those things so that you are always voice leading the score, you're always choosing the closest possible inversion, and you want to do it in real time without thinking too much, I'm doing this in my course, Complete Chord Mastery. Complete Chord Mastery, it's not a book. It's a complete video course that takes you from the basics up. We do everything you need to know about harmony and chords on your guitar. All the theory is done straight on the fretboard. There is no theory for the sake of theory here. Everything is immediately practical and everything is developed through exercises so you know how to apply these immediately on your guitar. If you have just a minute, click on the link on the top right to check out Complete Chord Mastery. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any comment, feedback, suggestions, write them down in the comment. I enjoy reading from you and I make videos on your suggestions. This is Tommaso Zilio of musictheoryforguitar.com and until next time, enjoy!